Hey guys, Steggy here with a video review of the Turtle Beach Air Force Z2 headset. Now, the Air Force Z2 headset is one of the latest headsets to be released by Turtle Beach. It's an upgrade slash successor to the Z1 headset and aims to corner the PC market much like they did with the Xbox 360 market with their X11 headset. Priced at $69.95, the Z2 is about the cost of a video game, and it provides you with the ability to communicate with your teammates and allows you to game into the wee hours of the morning without disturbing those around you. But how does this headset fare against other headsets priced similarly in its category? Well, we'll find that out right now. So, if you've seen my X11 video, you can notice right away that the design of this headset is immediately different. Uh, you can notice some similarities between the features of this headset and the X11 and then some differences as well. Uh, if you're looking for a headset to compare this to as far as looks, this is, it looks a lot like the uh, PX21 headset that Turtle Beach has uh, come out with, which is designed for the PS3. So just kind of going around the headset, we can notice that it's got the same uh, neoprene that it's got the same neoprene ear pads, much like the uh, X11s, X31s, X41s. Uh, and then it's got the same, you know, plush uh, pleather headband. But uh, the microphone is what's really changed with this headset uh, as compared to the other ones. Uh, this is more of like a uh, rubber kind of flexible uh, microphone, whereas the X11 and the X41 and the X31 use a flexible metal gooseneck. Now, at first when I saw the pictures of this headset online, I was worried about how this was going to fare. I didn't know how uh, ergonomic it was going to be. But it actually performs quite well. I still do like the metal uh, gooseneck design just because it's a little bit, uh, it's got a smaller profile. But this still performs very well and uh, gets the job done. So one of the things to note about the uh, microphone is that it is not detachable, so you're going to have this uh, attached. Alright, so one of the things you might be noticing here is how the headset's kind of, you know, escaping on me. This is because this is a uh, multi-collapsible headset. Now what does this mean exactly? Well, one of the things that uh, this headset can do that a lot of other headsets that I've seen do is uh, you can lay this flat on uh, a surface uh, or around your neck. Now, I'm personally fine at just this with headsets just because I can wear it around my neck and it's got a nice flat profile to shove in my backpack when traveling. But Turtle Beach goes an extra mile and decides to have it be collapsible uh, in this sort of fashion. Now, I mean... I don't really know what you're supposed to do with the microphone when you're down here. I'm not really the biggest fan of, you know, the headsets that kind of collapse like this, uh, sort of like the PC350 or even detached headsets like the 5HV2. Uh, like I said, I think the rotating ear pads is enough to get the job done. And when you kind of have this design, uh, you know, you're kind of fooling, you're, you're kind of fooled into thinking that the headset is a little bit more flimsy than it actually is just because uh, it's so, you know, foldable and all that. So looking at the ear pads, once again, these are the neoprene ear pads like the other uh, Air Force headsets, the newer ones. Uh, this is the rounded design though, it's not the oval one like the X11, this is more like the X41. Uh, uh, I prefer the X11's oval shape, but this is also fine too. It's very comfortable, so you can expect to get some pretty long gaming sessions when wearing this headset. So following the headset downwards, you notice that it ends right here. It's because the Z2 actually has a breakaway disconnect uh, jack, much like the Turtle Beach HPX, the Astro A30s, and the Astro A40s. Uh, it is very handy just because, you know, when you're playing a game and you need to answer the phone or you need to get something uh, to eat, you can just, you know, plug away and then you can go do what you need to do. Uh, on the other end of the breakaway jack, you have a very, very long uh, cord that ends at two 3.5 millimeter jacks. Uh, this cord comes with Velcro, so you don't have to deal with a huge mess. You can just kind of tie it all up. But if you see here, it is very long. Uh, pretty much when I've had to get up and just get something from my bedroom, I could walk all the way across and I wouldn't have to worry about dragging my controller or anything uh, just because it's that long. All right, so looking in the middle of the uh, breakaway jack, we see the controller puck right here. So this features uh, some of the standard features that you see on other uh, Air Force headsets. You have a mic mute switch right here, and then you have an inline volume jack. But then if you look right down here, you actually have a jack that can go to your controller port that allows you to talk on Xbox Live. Now while this is a PC headset, you can actually use this on Xbox Live, which is really nice. It kills two birds with one stone. All you have to do is purchase this talkback cable right here, which costs uh, you know, $5 on Turtle Beach's website and it allows you to connect your headset to your controller to allow you to uh, communicate with your teammates on Xbox Live. 
And the Turtle Beach Z2 is also one of the headsets that's fully compatible with the Turtle Beach Air Force DSS right off the bat. Uh, you basically just plug in the green end of the Turtle Beach Z2, plug it into the headphone jack of the DSS, and then like I said, you take this jack, plug it into the puck, and then plug the other end into your controller, and you are ready to go. You can game, you can listen to your private audio, and you have the virtual surround sound as well. So this is compatible with the DSS right off the bat without having to buy any Steel Series adapters or anything. Alright, so that's enough about the design. Now let's get into the sound. Now the Z2 reminds me a lot about the X11 uh, and the PX21 just because they're all aimed to kind of, you know, provide the budget solutions to their respective platforms. So while this reminds me of the X11 both in, you know, design, it also reminds me of it for its sound signature. You actually get a nice balanced sound out of this headset much like the X11. Some of the people who have used the X11 that I've seen their reviews on, they comment that the bass is a little bit weak when compared to their older headsets like the Turtle Beach X1s. I personally feel that the bass is at a comfortable level and is well balanced with the rest of the mids and the highs. I mean, don't expect like any bass thumping, but it is more present. It does have more present bass than you know the Audio Technica AD700s. It's just you know not going to shake your head. I personally think it's at a good balance. Some people think it's at a uh, you know sort of light like the X11s. So if you've tried the X11s and you like its bass, then you'd uh, be happy with this bass as well. Now, if you see the end of the uh, headset here, you have the two 3.5 millimeter jacks. So this is a little bit different than the PX21 and the Turtle Beach X11. There's no USB dongle. So what does this mean? This means that this headset is actually not amplified. You don't need any power to get this thing going. You just plug straight into your source. That means that this can just be plugged into a headphone jack of your TV, your DSS, or it can go into your MP3 player and you can listen to music. Now, because this doesn't have a detachable microphone, you aren't exactly going to be using this headset on the go just because, you know, with this thing sticking out, you might turn some heads. But the biggest deal about it being unamplified is that you have no hiss. So for those who've used the X11s and you've noticed the hissing in the background, this actually doesn't have that at all, which is great. So in addition to having the same kind of sound signature that the X11 has, you have a better quality of sound too, just because you don't have any of that hiss you have a nice balanced sound that's uninterrupted. Now, with this kind of sound signature and this kind of uh, sound quality, where does this stack up to other headsets? Well, other headsets priced in its category, like the uh, Steel Series headsets, the 5HV2, the Siberian Neckband, and the Siberian V2, I'd pick this headset above the 5HV2 and the Neckband. It has a nice, more balanced sound uh, as compared to the boomy sound of the Neckband and the bass light sound of the 5HV2. I do prefer the Siberia V2 a little bit more, but keep in mind the Siberia V2 is $100 compared to this uh, $69.95. So what are we left with here? I think that this is a great budget solution for those who are looking for a headset for PC gaming, for Xbox 360 gaming, and for uses for music and movies. I'd really recommend this headset if your primary function is PC gaming, just because you know it's pretty much optimized for it. When you're using this headset with the Xbox Live, the only difference between this and the X11 is that the X11 provides game and chat balancing, while this one does not. So if you game, so if you game more on the Xbox 360 than the PC, you might want to look into the X11s just because you know they're the same price, but they do have that game and chat balancing. Whereas on the PC, you do that via your computer anyways, the chat and game balancing. So that function isn't really necessary. So if you lean more towards uh, PC, this is the one to get. If you lean more towards the Xbox 360, the X11s are the one to get. And uh, I guess just to throw it out there, if you're leaning towards PS3, then the PX21 would be the one to get. But the price that they ask for, this is just a great deal, and it's very hard not to recommend. Like I said, their manufacturer's uh, suggested retail price is $69.95, but you can actually get these on Amazon. The latest price I've seen is $47. So this is less than a video game, basically, and it's actually cheaper than the Turtle Beach X11s. So uh, if you are in the market for a headset and this you know fits your budgetary requirements, I would definitely recommend this headset. So, this is Steggy B with another headset review. If you like this video, please hit the like button, uh, and then also comment it and, you know, subscribe to my channel. And if you're not following me at Twitter, follow me at twitter.com slash mlgsteggy, uh, where I'll be providing you with uh, updates for my reviews and uh, other MLG happenings. So, until the next time, peace out, guys. Thank you for watching.